Hello, I've just stuck the Windows 7 CD into this virtual machine here and we're loading up files because we're going to install Windows. So hopefully your computer, when you get it, will actually boot from the CD or DVD drive and you've got your Windows disk in there and you switch it on and off it goes. It may not do so. If it does, you'll see what you're seeing here. If it doesn't, you have to fiddle about with the machine a bit to make it do so. Usually that means going into what's called the BIOS, its basic input-output system, to tell it to boot from DVD or CD drive. The way you do that normally is when your computer first switches on, for a few seconds only, you'll see some white writing on the screen and usually at the bottom of the screen or on the left somewhere it says something like hit Dell to enter setup or hit F12 to enter setup or whichever key it is that it tells you. Tap that key while that message is on the screen. Sometimes you only have a couple of seconds. If you miss it, try again. Shut the computer down and start again. Once you're into the BIOS you'll see writing all over the screen. It's an old-fashioned basic, basic, basic interface. Use the arrow keys to navigate. Find the boot up or start up options and you hit, you select it, you hit enter, you go in there and you change the settings. Sometimes you have to use plus and minus keys to change a setting. Sometimes you can use arrow or enter keys, it just depends on your computer. The instructions are always on the screen somewhere, you just have to figure it out. Put the DVD drive at the top of the list or tell it to start from the DVD drive. Save the settings and exit. Usually F10 is the way to save your settings and exit and you usually have to tip, tap Y for yes, I really want to do it and so on. Restart with the DVD in the drive and hopefully you'll get what you saw when this video started. It'll load files, and it'll come to a startup screen something like this where you can choose your language. I've only got English, but at least I can choose proper English, eh? British English, there we go. Next. Oh, you might also have to choose whatever language you want for your keyboard if you don't have a, a standard one, or even if, even if you do. And then we go install. Hopefully it will just do it. Obviously it's going to ask all sorts of stupid questions and you've got to be ready with the answers. Um, obviously you're going to read all the stupid license terms. There you go, there they are. Amazing, eh? Next. I'm going to install a new copy of Windows because this is as if it's a brand new machine. Bink. I've got my drive. Let's go. Sometimes um, you may want to do things like partition and so on. There's advanced options if you really want them. But let's suppose you don't know what you're doing and you want to just keep it simple. Click Next. The computer will do <coughs> A setup for you. If you want anything fancy, um, get someone to help you. And now it will sort of chug away and do the installation. At the moment the screen resolution is kind of small, hence all the black space around here. Um, I may be able to change that later on, but for now you can expect it to be looking huge on your screen when you're doing this, because it will be assuming only basic facilities on your computer until it can, until you can tell it differently or until it detects all the components and decides what it can do. I'm just going to pause the video briefly while it uh, does the slow bits. All right, through the magic of video, we're nearly there. It's taken it about 10 minutes on my computer. It could easily take longer. 
on some machines. Um, and this is only one of the steps. Uh, certainly at this stage you have time to go away and get yourself a cup of tea or something. At some point it'll probably sit around asking you some questions, but we're not up to that stage yet. If you're going to be installing Windows at home on a new machine, you probably need to set aside a couple of hours, realistically. Plus, because there are so many Windows updates to get once your machine is up and running, security updates and all the rest of it, that in itself can take a few hours because of the sp depending on the speed of your internet connection. Um, but you can leave that to the automated systems. And you shouldn't waste much time getting antivirus and whatnot on your computer. Just one little tip, you don't really need to use the purchased ones or the, the commercial ones that come with your computer. There are perfectly good free ones online that you can download. Avast, AVG, um, Avira. All of these companies do free ones. There's others. I don't like McAfee. I don't like Symantec personally um, because they're, they, they, they're commercial. And I don't mind commercial programs, but they advertise themselves, they're too much in your face, constantly popping up with stuff and interfering with your systems and your control over your computer. Um, it's abusive, to be honest. I prefer a program that sits there doing its job quietly and not pestering me all the time. All right, it's, it's done some stuff, we're going to restart. Because this is a virtual machine and not a real computer, it'll be fast and you might see the virtual box pop up, which you won't get on your machine. There we go, there it is. On your machine you'll have your own BIOS. Now here, ignore that, don't boot from the DVD. Just let it go. Okay. Let me just drag this back to the middle of your screen. Or thereabouts. Oops. So it's done a reboot, it's now going back in. Oops, and now we've got... Oh, well, here we go, it'll figure out what it's doing. It's, you see it's increased the screen size anyway. This looks like 1024 by 768 to me. Completing installation. There you go, at the bottom. Let me show you that. There's stuff there. I can't control the resolution, but it has to be suitable for YouTube, so that's why it's slicing off the top and the bottom. Even after Windows is installed, there's stuff to do. And you'll see it's jumping about, altering the display, and so on. It's figuring out what hardware you've got, what stuff it needs for it to work, and, and so on, and, and hopefully installing the correct files and drivers that your computer is going to need to work with Windows. The reason you need Windows is because computers need some interface between the machinery and the human. You need to be able to tell the computer to do stuff, basically. So that's what Windows is for, that's what um, Mac OS is for on a Mac, that's what Android is for on a tablet or a phone and so on. It's just so you can tell the machine what to do. It's a way of communicating. Another restart. You don't need to do anything all, during all this. Just let it 
churn away. It's saying press any key, but you don't have to press a key to boot from the boot from the CD because it's you just missed that because I didn't drag it onto the screen quickly enough. But um, here we go. Is it oh, right? Let's try and get this down to size. It doesn't know what to do on my screen. <laughs> Clearly, on yours, it will fit the screen. Oh, here we go again. Change the screen size yet again. It's mad. All right. These things at the bottom you can see are because I'm using a virtual machine to show you this. I don't want to install it on my own computer because I've already got Windows on it and it will really mess it up to do it again, obviously. I I don't want to have to, un have to reinstall all my programs, so this little virtual box will do the trick. Maybe I can get this to the right size yet again. Can I? No, it's not really. Okay, we'll keep it whatever size it wants. Oh, a username. Well, let's see. Um, Alpha Jukana. That is my website, alphajukana.co.uk. It's brilliant. I'll call it Virtual PC just for the sake of. Uh, Oh, I can't. VPC, well that's it. You're limited in length, clearly. Type a password. Ooh. You should probably do that. Um, I don't need it on this machine. A good password has capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols such as full stops, exclamation marks, brackets, stars, and so on and it is more than 14 characters long and it is not your cat's name, your daughter's name, your date of birth or anything like that a past phrase is the best type of thing really or a nonsense word with numbers and hyphens and what have you in it I'm not going to do it product key you have to type in your product key which should be on a label on the back of your disk somewhere It'll look something like this. You see it sticks the dashes in. I'm just making this up because um, it's unnecessary for you to see it and, and there are lots of crooks out there who will try and steal it. But it's a long, 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 long number. number. and so on, and then when the next button comes up you can press it. And you get to a screen like this. Um, if you've typed in your, part, your product key and it's valid, I suppose. Mine won't be valid because it's the one for my actual computer and I'm, I'm duplicating it on this machine using it a second time. For now, of the options here, most people will say use recommended settings. This is so that Windows will download security updates and all the rest of it. Um, you really should do this. If you don't get the updates, your computer will be very vulnerable to viruses and attacks and so on. Choose your time zone, set the date, make sure the time is right. Lots of time zones, as you can see. next and decide where you are most people will be on a home network even if it's your only computer you'll be on a home network for most people obviously if you're in an office your IT people will figure it out for you um, if you're in a small company, well, work network is fine. Use that. Get 
this up here. One day it'll it'll show all this at the right size, I suppose. Preparing your desktop. The desktop is the metaphor that Windows uses. Um, it's the, the, the screen here, it is. It's this screen, in fact, with icons on it like the recycle bin. It's a metaphor. It's like a desk in an office, and you stick your stuff on here when you're working on it. And that is it. You are in Windows. There are a couple of things you probably may want to do. One, if you right click, straight away on a blank space on the screen, choose the screen resolution. It, it may start off as pretty basic, so let's improve it a bit. Um, and I'll just say OK, and it'll, it'll try it out. Do I want to keep changes? Yes, I do. And I will just shove this back to the middle of the screen for the moment. Again, for YouTube, it doesn't quite fit, but there you go. Um, another thing you want to do is personalise it, maybe put some nice pictures on it. I don't know. In different countries, you have different themes that you can apply. You can set the desktop background picture alone. Um, you can download pictures or themes off the internet whatever you want to do really. Um, what's this one? Let's have a look. I guess I've just done it. So let's close that. Click on the little X in the top right corner which you can't quite see. There it is. And oh we've got some amazing mind-blowing eye distracting wallpaper. That is terrible actually for a wallpaper. Um, <laughs> Let's choose something fairly neutral. Here we go. Some scenery. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay. Now, the other thing you should do is updates. Now, Windows will do it automatically, um, actually, if you leave it long enough. But don't wait around for Windows to do it. Go to Start. That's that button here. Click All Programs. And go to Windows Update. And get it started. Check for updates. You will probably find not two updates, but 150 or more. Get them, install them, okay? Just, just do it. Security updates are crucial because so many people are trying to hack into your computer. If your computer is on the internet unprotected for more than a quarter of an hour or so, your risk, the odds are your machine will have been found by the bad guys within that time. Whether they do anything with it in that time is another question. But studies have shown that the average unprotected computer is detected within 15 minutes, 14 minutes in fact. So figure out what you're going to do about your antivirus in that time as well, ideally. And it'll do it'll do the updates now. The updates will it will need to restart. But basically, that's it. For most people, installing updates will take them another couple of hours, <laughs> I'm afraid, because it has to download hundreds of them and install them. And it usually has to do it more than once as well. So you do the updates, you restart, you do more updates, and so on, until it doesn't find any more, basically. And then off you go. So, OK, that's it. Windows 7 is installed. I hope that's been helpful. And goodbye for now.